Yes, people, welcome back. And we're on episode eight, I believe. I'm just, we're doing too many at the moment. I can't keep track. We have another special guest, even further than Martin now this person is. I don't even want to say what time it is, where they're currently at at the moment. It's not as early for me, but I'll let this person introduce themselves for them. Hey, it's Samantha Johnson from America, originally now playing for Melbourne City down in Australia. Thanks for having me. That's all right. Far too early. We won't tell everyone what time it is. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think 6 a.m. Got it for you. That's all good. <laughs> um, but no, thanks for coming on, like I said beforehand. Um, first female player, or well, first of many, should we say. Um, yes, exactly. On, on the channel. Um, but no, yeah, it's, it's great to have you on. But as I ask with everyone, wherever they've started from, where did it all start and why soccer or football? Right, right. Um, well, both my parents are athletes or were athletes. My dad played American football. My mom played basketball in college. So we're athletic family. Um, I always say that I just gravitated towards a soccer ball, I guess. Like, it's just the ball that I probably picked up. And my mom just said I asked to play when I was, like, four. And so in America, you can't play until you're five. So I had to wait a year. But I pretty much don't have a memory without soccer in my life. So it's quite interesting. <laughs> and was that – do you have, like, siblings as well? Do they, do they play – does everyone play sports, I'm guessing? Um, everyone at one point played sports. I was the only one that was really obsessed with my sport and just took it clearly to the next level. Um, yeah, I was like never not seen without a soccer ball or doing something soccer related. So it was really serious for me at a young age, but my sisters, I have three sisters and a brother, so they all play like football, softball, soccer, but I was just a little bit different. <laughs> And obviously, you said obviously you're sporting family and obviously, I was going to say your first ever coach that kind of when you were younger, but obviously being surrounded by your mum, your dad, your siblings, mm -hmm. was it kind of like living with a coach at the same time? Because obviously that, I'm guessing it's very competitive or is it quite? Yeah, um, it kind of is, but not like sports competitive. We're big like on education and stuff. So we had like standards in our family to like make sure you got your homework done and like so you could do your sport type of thing. Um, but like the coach, I, guess, I don't actually think my parents really knew like how good I was at soccer because they're not like soccer people. They just knew I really, really liked it. So they just kind of supported me just based on like how much I was putting that much time and effort into it. Um, but the first coach that I ever got that really like set my foundation for like a more of a tactical, technical um, thing is a guy named Charles Gordon. And he, I had him when I was like, maybe like 11, 12, 13 ish, which is like, obviously, you know, like critical time yeah. in development. So he like, I think really, really helped me develop like a strong foundation to like build off of. And what was that like at that time? Cause I know here in the UK, a lot of girls that want to play soccer and football and they want to, they want to get into teams. And there are, I don't know, obviously in America, you should tell everyone what's the, what's it like? Do you have just an all girls team from five and upwards or is it, do you have to go in the mix? Cause I know in many parts of the country in the UK, if you're say seven, sometimes you might not, and you're a, you're a female, you might not have the opportunity to, play and train with a girls team and you normally mix oh, with really? the boys yeah what so what's that like in, in america and was that a is that an issue really would you say um it's not you actually have the option which is cool so i like we have boys and girls like there's no shortage of like girls teams so soccer is like the number one sport for youth in america so there's so many teams that you could play for at every level pretty much so you can play with girls, but like I did both. So I played with my girls team and then I trained with the boys um, just to get better or whatever, or get more training. And so I did that from like a young age as well. Like even, um, yeah, like 11, 12, 13, I like trained and played with boys all the time, but I played all my games with my girls team. And did you know at that kind of, at that time that you were maybe kind of that just one little level above the rest of the players you were playing with or even from like that young age and did your did your coach notice that or was it not until you maybe got scouted or, or whatever mm -hmm. no I think my coach definitely noticed like if I wasn't already like better than my teammates maybe like he could tell that I was going to be or I had like the potential to get better um so and I think he 
probably clocked that straight away because he was like really hard on me. <laughs> and you know how coaches are. They I was going like, to say, we're really all the harder. same. <laughs> yeah. So like, I think he clocked that for sure early on. And then, I mean, obviously when you're a kid, you just think like that's the way your coach is. So. And do you ever, talking about obviously at this point, you're 12, 13, really young yeah. team. Do you look back now and everyone that lives in the UK will know what I mean by this. So we call it like a grassroots coach. So obviously when you're just uh -huh. playing before the academy, like your local team, grassroots coaches get kind of a bad, bad name because they're just normal people that oh. volunteer on the weekend. So yeah. was do you look back now and go, wow, that was awful? Because a lot of people that, that I speak to, they're like, oh yeah, my grassroots coach knew nothing. What was that kind of like for you? Did you really, do you look back now and think, no, like that was a massive part of, of my coming no, out. it was like a massive part. Like it really, really was. Um, I like I can't obviously remember like all the sessions, but I just remember there was a lot of like technical and there was a lot of tactical stuff too at like such a young age. He, like he like taught us the number system and all the formations. And I just remember thinking, what the hell is this? Do you know what I'm saying? Like when yeah. you're first trying to learn the systems, like as a child. And so I was like, okay, like seven, eleven, whatever, whatever, you know. And so I think because I established the tactical stuff so early in I used to watch, or I still watch, but like I grew up watching a lot of soccer, like you just only EPL usually. And so I watch it every weekend. And I think because I was being taught the number system so young that it just like came together and then paired with obviously the technical abilities. Like, so it just kind of layered itself. But mm -hmm. I don't think like, I mean, I can't say where I'd be without him, but like yeah. he plays a big part because it was like the foundation. Because after that, I went to the next coach we'll probably talked about who just, made everything go to the next level pretty much i was going to say let, let's talk about that so is this your time in high school or, or to, at college are we talking at this point now high school so when i was like the 11 12 13 range like that's like eighth grade and you're going to high school excuse me so i got discovered at like this tournament pretty much and like my soon to be new coach like a person came up to my mom and was like she's too good to be on this team like she needs to go play for a better club yeah. and so obviously that didn't really go over well with my coach but so I switched clubs to be on a better team to be you know more challenged or whatever and then my new coach Christy Walker like she taught me basically like you know everything pretty much that took mm -hmm. me from 14 to college you know yeah. so she just kind of helped like you know because when you're developing you could have like you can become stagnant in your development and yeah. not get better and just because like you're super talented some coaches just think like oh they don't want to coach you so you don't like kind of break what you've already got mm -hmm. but you have to like keep pushing yourself so she like kept pushing me and I ended up you know being way better than a lot of people <laughs> that I played yeah. against. and was that kind of like you said about your coach there and I always say look back at all these moments do you look back now and, and especially think each of those moments you saw little things that you were adding to your game that do you think without your coach kind of having that knowledge and knowing when to say th certain things or knowing when to put pressure on, take pressure off, do you look back now at your career and obviously from going to America and now to Australia, do you see that these things that you just naturally think about now, they put into your brain from such a young age? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that, because obviously being in like the American culture has a lot to do with it. It's all about like mentality and like fitness. So all that stuff is just like basic standards. And then on top of that, it's about like, you know, being able to be really, really good. Like when you're tired and when you're exhausted and you like get all this stuff ingrained in you at like such a young age. So like when you get older, it just seems second nature to like, you know, not even question, like do an extra run or like, when you get tired, like your brain has to still be switched on, like all this yeah. stuff is second nature. So I think it helps like when you get older, cause you get more mature. So you understand how to deal with like the ebbs and flows of like an actual 90 minute game, you know? And obviously in the U S it's definitely like we've already seen, it's massively different in the UK. Yeah. Especially for, for females. When you went off to university or college, shall we say, mm -hmm. um, yeah. what was the, was that kind of a bit of a wake up call to you looking at like, is that a wake up call from coach to where you were at to where they were there and also players around you? What was, what was that like? So what was your first day like at oh my God. on the at, first day, at training? The first day I wanted to quit. The first day I was <laughs> like, I don't play. Yeah. I was like, I, I hate soccer. 
<laughs> it was so terrible. So like, remember, the fitness thing is, is a real thing in America. So first day I get there, we're get on the track and we have to do these like runs around the track, like 400 meter runs. And we do, first we do like a thing called a Cooper, which is two miles and 12 minutes. Yeah. And then we do 10 400s after that because my coach was upset that the times were like bad okay. and i just remember thinking this is some bullshit basically yeah. <laughs> right like i was like how is this even like real like how are we allowed to do this much running and be like physically abused and it was basically like that for four years like on genuinely and i was like wow oh, really? this is not what i thought like college would you soccer. say that's would you say that's the fittest you you were at the end of those four years would you say that's the thing i don't think so like i think okay. i was like so burnt out do you know what i'm saying like yeah, you yeah, yeah. i was like, oh, we're over trained you know like we would like mm -hmm. turn up to the games and we'd be like wow we're so tired yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying so i think if they just were too much of like mental physical toughness or whatever i don't know their methodologies were off mm -hmm. but like i feel like i was i got that coach was like completely crazy so i was like okay my perspective on the game or you know soccer was like yeah. i don't want to do it anymore it's not fun whatever but like my fittest i guess or whatever like i'm pretty fit now but like i think it has a lot to do with like understanding your body it's so over cool. time it's just like trial and error like no one can get it right you know what i mean because you don't know how your body's mm -hmm. going to react when you're younger you know what i'm saying so i feel like over time it just you can get more fit. or the older players see more fit or whatever or can yeah. get in shape quickly because they know exactly how to do it versus mm -hmm. young people you know and do you think like we've already seen well, i can already tell you've had very three very very different coaches that mm -hmm. have added massive parts to your game would you say i'm not going to say name the coach it doesn't really matter but at <laughs> your time at, at college was it was that coach kind of a very old school tradition run if you're if you're bad at something shout if you're good well done like very yeah. robotic drill sergeant type and was that what was that like do you reckon if you had that every single place where you've been you would have been oh god there's no way i wouldn't have survived there's just no way you know what i mean like i would have been like this is not it would have been just like a different perspective of the game i would have been confused like wait is this soccer but when like really it's not do you know what i'm saying so I thankfully i got that on the back end i was gonna say and what is it just for everyone listening what is it like because obviously our university in the uk is massively different even yeah. i've I, I done a i've done a football-based degree and it, it's massive different in terms of like the facilities what, what's that like is that did you do you know that going into it and does that when we're talking about mentality as coaches what does that kind of do to yourself when you've done the four years and you go from, I don't mm -hmm. know, really nice facilities, all this stuff, to square one again, there's a local pitch next to my house. What's, what <laughs> was that like? like and what was, what was it actually like at a, a, a top university? No, I mean, being at USC, because that's where I went in California, yeah. was amazing. Like, it really, really was. It was crazy. Like, we had better facilities there than at the professional level, you really? know? <laughs> like, because obviously college is so much money that, like, yeah all the big schools have like pro way past pro level stuff you know what i'm saying so it's crazy what we get and like the amount of resources you just like treated like kings and queens pretty much because yeah. you're the athletes and everyone thinks you're cool um but no i mean i think that when you have all that good stuff around you the university like in not on purpose but kind of like there's a lot of pressure to like perform because they're mm -hmm. like obviously we give you all the stuff like you have no excuse you know what i'm saying but to yeah. like give us your your best if you will so there's pressure with all of the, the lovely resources and what's that like mentality wise going in every day knowing this and, and obviously it's one of the biggest universities in the world like everyone knows yeah. it they, they might not even have a clue where it is but they know usc they know it and what's yeah. that what's that like to now like you said you, you you've played in in the u.s and played now in or playing now in australia uh -huh. do you think that kind of shaped your mentality knowing that things don't just you you can't just be good at soccer you need to do so much more yeah 100 percent. i think it just makes you realize that like 
there's more than one dimension to the mm -hmm. situation, you know, like soccer is a big part, but like you also have to be like a whole person, you know what I mean? And be able to navigate through the environment. Like just cause I can kick a ball, like doesn't mean I can walk down the hall and like have an intelligent conversation with yeah. my coaches or like something like that. You know what I mean? Like you need to be able to like adapt to the whole environment and be more than like, Oh, just, I'm just going to turn up the training and then like kick a ball and then go mm -hmm. home. Like you have to like come off pitch, do a recovery go into film, you know what I'm saying? And be able to like be excellent in all those areas. So that's kind of like where I guess the pressure is to like not rise to the standard, but just understand like the standards around you are very high. So you should be mindful of that. And does that kind of remind you as well, kind of, I'm guessing the players that you're surrounded with are all yeah. obviously of the level. Top notch, like top of the top. Yeah. And every Did level you, play you top with everyone's number one where they came from you know so I'm like people like forget I'm like do you not understand like what being like a college player or like a professional is it's like literally every single player on the team is the number one player where they come from so it's like everyone's good everyone's fast everyone's fit because the standards are kind of roughly the same you know to be in the environment and like the way you separate yourself is like by a margin you know what I mean like marginal separation so it's crazy so what was it, um, any players that you played with that have gone on to the, the biggest stage to play for the national team, anything like that at all? Or? Oh, yeah, as my, like a bunch of my teammates, actually, from um, a bunch of countries, America especially, obviously. Um, when I was in Chicago, we had a lot of national team players. Um, I played next to Julie, who's now Julie Ertz. Yeah. Yeah, uh, she was my center back partner and then um, we had Kristen Press on our team and we had a girl from New Zealand who was also my center back uh, pairing Abby Ersig she's the captain in New Zealand mm -hmm. and then I played with people um, from Iceland on the Iceland national team Scotland's captain um, yeah plenty I don't think I've played with any of the English girls yet but oh and definitely obviously Australia because they come and play in America as yeah. well so we're all just kind of mixed stand but yeah it's kind of cool to have all of them in there because obviously they're even better players so they keep the level like mm -hmm. the professional level high and how was that kind of i speak about it a lot in terms of my managerial style and how other people i speak to other coaches and players what was that like looking back now what did your coaches do your time obviously in that environment mm -hmm. to kind of keep the level headedness like you said you're at one of the biggest universities in the in the world not just in america yeah you've yeah. got all the best players from wherever they live that is they're the best right. players. They've, all, they've only ever known i'm the best in my position <laughs> right and now you've got 25 of them all moving away from home and they yeah. all think they're the best what right. what did is there any points that you can remember like getting pulled in or, or or being kind of brought down to earth or what did the coach do you know i i don't think he didn't really have to manage like a lot of egos per se. I don't think, I think he's, he actually struggled with like, like bringing out people's confidence, like a little bit of like, we almost didn't have enough like arrogance. Do you know what I'm saying? Like we almost were like the, the grateful bunch, but like really, you know, a humble bunch, I guess mm -hmm. you would say. Um, I can't remember like any, it's different at the pro level, because <laughs> obviously, but like at the college level, like at least my group was just a little more like, humble if you will um and we're always, yeah we're we're always told though and i don't know if this is like just a female thing or people tell us because we're girls that like oh you should be grateful type of thing and like now that we're pros we're like no fuck that like we should be grateful <laughs> we're professionals no, <laughs> so I like when we're like no <laughs> like you should be thankful you get to have like an ice bath i'm like excuse me <laughs> but like the college was different like we were just like thank God we're here. And I was like, thank God I'm here. Cause I'm from Palmdale, which you don't know what that is, but I'm just like, I made it, you know? Yeah. So I was like, yeah. So he, I think he needed to like, give us a little more like edge, mm -hmm. you know, like be like, you guys deserve to be here kind of thing. Like more of those talks versus like, Oh, be grateful. You know what I mean? Cause like, I feel like you can calm confidence or like you can calm arrogance down, but it's hard to like teach it and bring mm -hmm. it out, you know? So no, most definitely. So yeah. obviously we, you've done, four years is it four years at, out in america yeah at the university, four years yeah. at the university. Mm -hmm. you've now left at what point did you did you know you were going to go straight into a into a pro team or 
Or did no, you come hell off no. Or, I no. quit soccer. I was like, I'm not playing anymore. I yeah. quit for a year. Yeah. I was like, this is awful. And I told you it was terrible at USC. Mm -hmm. Like I was, it was just so hard. I didn't like it. And like the school was amazing, but the program was like super, super challenging. And so I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And when I was in school, the, the league didn't exist. Like the NWSL wasn't a thing. It came about like my senior year. Like, yeah. so it was like very quick to be like, oh, I want to play. You know what I mean? When yeah. I was not like, no one was working towards being professional. No, you know no, what I'm saying? No. So, um, yeah, when that happened, I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> like, I don't want to play anyways, you know? Yeah. And then my, my best friend at the time, she went to UCLA and she was the number one overall draft pick. And so she played the first year there and then in Chicago and then basically called me and was like, you know, come try out for Chicago. And I was like, ew, no, I'm not doing that. But I did, so. <laughs> and what's, just to let everyone know, where kind of, at that time, where was Chicago in terms of, if, if, were they in the top league in America? Were they in the middle? Yeah, it was the NWSL, like okay. the MLS for yeah, women. Yeah. So we're like the top division. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know how, I remember how Chicago did that year or whatever, mm -hmm. but it was the first year. So I was like, whatever. But no, it was like, I mean, you can't get any higher unless you get selected, obviously, to yeah. be on the national team. <laughs> but no, it was just not in the cards for me. I just did not like think like I'm going to be a professional, you know? Mm -hmm. And obviously from all that as well, we, we spoke a lot about mentality and, and man management. Your first day going into into the, the pro game per se, mm -hmm. but what was that kind of like going into a, a actual club when you've got pros around you? Was it still mm -hmm. kind of like I still don't want to be here, or did it set, sink in that at that point? Or you know what? I think that I struggled with like the reality of being a professional because that. The end of the sales are third league, I think, in like the female professional yep. leagues. So obviously, like keeps folding, and so um, I didn't obviously have any idea of what maybe it actually was going to be like. But in my brain, I thought, surely this is a proper professional. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the environment's going to be like amazing in terms of like the level of players, and mm -hmm. everyone's coming from top schools, and like surely we have like you know the basics of the facilities, and it was yeah. none of that. I was like, I hadn't been played soccer for a year. And like, I was like, wow. Like the fact that I can still kind of just jump in and kick a ball. And like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I was like, mm, okay. So you, you know what I'm saying? That you were going to have to. I thought I was going to be like struggling. Like yeah. I was like, there's no way I can play at this level. Do you know what I'm saying? And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think because the, the environment was new, like the league was new and like the structure and everything was still being built. It was just kind of like, just jump in and ride yeah. the wave type of thing. So at what point, how long were you at Chicago for? Just let everyone know. Five years. You were there for five years. As it mm -hmm. obviously went through those five years, did you, did it slowly become, obviously like you said, the league came around for one year, mm -hmm. you then went in. Mm -hmm. What, did you have the same coach for the whole time or? Yeah, the same coach. Actually, yeah. like the facility leagues and stuff we started with, we were like, eh. but then like we got better and we like moved to the, um, the stadium where the men play, like got yeah. a locker room and like shared, you know, resources ish. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like we didn't have everything, but like we had a locker room. So that was a start. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then I got traded to the Royals and it was a completely different ball game. Like that was the standard right there. Like yeah. we had, everything was ours. Like we split everything with the men, but like we had our own space. So we had our, like in the locker room or in our side, we had like the weight room and mm -hmm. lounge and we got fed twice a day. And you, you know, it was like what you should have pretty should much. Have, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that that's like the highest standard and no, nobody functions like that on a daily basis in the league. is like, come on, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, so kind of like definitely, like you said, me that mentality, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to, I, it's kind of like seeing what's, what's the end game here? Are we ever going to get yeah. to that kind of, oh, I'm going into work, regardless of it's soccer or not, you're going in, it's yeah. like, I'm at the top level, but it's, it's. Top nothing. of the yeah. top. Like, I can't get any higher. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so what, what, so what I'm point, like. At what point did the, um, obviously you come to the time of the end, you got sent over to the Royals. Was that, mm -hmm. was that just because your contract ended? Or what, and what was the coach no, like? No, I asked to be traded. So I okay. asked to be traded like a year or so before, but they would not trade me. And I was like... And, while, and why was that? And what was, what was the, me and the, what was the coach, that me and the coach like? did not get along. I was like over it. I was like, I don't want to be coached by you. Like, 
you're a psycho. You know what, what I'm saying? Why like, is right? that? Well, because the environment, again, it was like my college environment, like 2.0, right? So it was like, okay. why, why can't I just like turn up and come to training and like get better? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. why is it not just almost focused around only soccer? Like, I only want to talk about soccer. I only want to think about soccer. I don't want to worry about you having an attitude, or you yelling at us and being like derogatory. It's like, I don't mind shouting, but like shout like solutions. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't yeah, like don't shout. Just say like, something I'm for shit. the sake of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm like, none of this is conducive. Like, I don't have time to argue with you in the game. But like, do you know what I'm saying? So it was just like chaotic, like all the time. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, this, I don't get paid enough for you to talk to yeah. me like this. So you've now gone to the to the Royals, and yeah. is this mm-hmm. a com- what was the relationship there with with that coach? Oh, it was lovely. It was like yeah. a dream. No, it was like the exact opposite. Like it was a. Uh, amazing so and, and i like i played for the best coach because i played for laura harvey you know laura yeah, harvey yeah, yeah yeah like top notch top, i was like thank level. god so what what was that like obviously you're you you said a lot where you don't get on with, with we haven't got along for, for obvious reasons with some yeah. of your coaches why what what in your eyes did laura harvey have for example that they yeah. didn't have in terms of player to coach what, um, what, what first of all tactical brain yeah. tactical brain helps <laughs> but then like just her delivery like she was just like all football if you will do you know what i'm saying like yeah. i you know i can't speak for other players only myself and my experience with her but like i always felt like there was just no drama it's like she just knew like i'm a very straightforward person and like if she needed to tell me something she would tell me something she needed to tell me something to mm. do something better different whatever just like shoot it to me straight and like i'll do it you know what i'm saying whereas like i feel like other coaches like maybe they just didn't know how to talk to me or like i was just like i don't know you know what i mean like it just we just didn't get along so i just want to show up and like do my job and like do it well so i can like help the team Mm -hmm. and like it's to me it's simple but like the other coaches i feel like it, it wasn't as simple and laura was always just like very like tactics forward or at least I saw her that way so I just was like soaking it in you know it was just so much easier to just turn up the training because I was like finally someone who just only focuses on the team and people getting better you know what I'm saying so you definitely would say there's so many people that say what makes a great coach but for me if you can't manage people and 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 I think people get this misconstrued especially within soccer and football around the globe, that it's tactics, 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 all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And you even see at the highest level now, you, you take two of the biggest managers, let's say, in the Premier League, mm-hmm. Guardiola and Klopp. Mm-hmm. Two very, very different management styles. One, pure philosopher, technician, yeah. absolutely the godfather, you could say, of, of football, redeformed how we, people play football now across the world but very robotic, you could say. But you could say with Klopp, for example, on the other hand, he, they play for him. He could say yeah. anything. And it's that kind of people play for him. When you, you look at a lot of the other managers that have, that have played, sorry, that have um, coached everywhere, like you said, mm-hmm. they might not visually or people think, oh, they don't actually have the tactical know-how. But yeah. people like Klopp, um, Harry Redknapp at, like, at, at Spurs, sorry, um, Bobby Robson his time at Newcastle taking very average players and making them great because mm-hmm. they want to play for you and, and it's, it's great, great to hear and so your time at the Royals was for how long? A year A year and then was mm-hmm. that just for a year contract or did you ask to leave again or, or what happened then? I retired after that and then because yeah. I didn't want to play soccer anymore and it's like a lot to do with like the financials and me missing like a lot of stuff in my family and like just not feeling like the investment I was giving to the game was like being work- was worth yeah. it. Do you know what I'm saying? Because yep. I mean, I had already played six years and I was like, I have nothing to show for the six years. Like yeah. I really, I already know who I am and what I want to do like off the field. But like, yeah. I just felt like all this time and effort for like what, you know? And it was like sucks because I had such a good coach and like I wanted to play for her for, for a long time. But like, mm. it's just like, I can't do this anymore <laughs> type of thing. But I do agree with you. Like, first of all, coaches, like, they're such special people because I couldn't be a coach genuinely because I, I just feel like I'm just too, like, black and white. You know, I'm just, like, yeah. show up. I don't want to manage people. Like, first of all, I manage myself. <laughs> so, yeah. like, as a player, and, like, I don't want to be, like, managed necessarily because I don't require, like, the emotional, like, 
side. Like I'm not going to yeah. tell you how I'm feeling. You know what I mean? But like people like love that. And I think that that's a good skill because like a good people skill. Well, like if you can relate to your coach and feel comfortable, like you'll turn up to training and like really get after it. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you like have faith in your coach and your coach has faith in you. Like that's like a real thing. I'm just not one of those players, but like I see yeah. it all the time. So do you think like obviously you said like you see it all the time and is that one thing that you look back now from every single level you you've played at current and even currently now mm -hmm. do you think that's the big difference from once you first started playing football at the age of five to now that not every single person they could be the best tactical whatever but if they don't get you regardless mm -hmm. even if you're in the wrong would you say the coach manager still has to get the best out of you and would you say that's yeah. where some, some players you may have played with that, like you see now, it, it, everywhere, it's kind of, oh, this player is, is banished from the first team. Just right. For whatever reason. And do you think, so do right. so, so you think that mentality, again, we talk about that all the time. Yeah. The mentality of coach to player, it shouldn't be so, I'm there, you're there. It should be kind of level. Yeah, no, I definitely think so. And I mean, I have to give coaches a lot of credit because they have like, you know, almost 25 people that they have to yeah. communicate 25 different ways <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm like that's insane first of all to really think about it that yeah. like that because they have a lot to manage it does have nothing to do with training you know what i'm saying like literally and so even in training like they have to explain drills and t certain tactics like so many different ways because mm -hmm. all of us is receiving information differently you know yeah. and so like i'm like that's like not funny but I'm just like that kind of sucks like as yeah. a coach but that's why they're so great you know yeah. what I mean and like for me I just want to be told like straight like straight up like this what's my that. job yeah this is how it is you know what I mean and the other players like maybe like need a pat on the back or like need to have a chat let's go have a coffee which I'm like completely fine like do what you have to do but it's just crazy that coaches have to be so mindful of that or else they literally a player could be shit because she or he turns up and feels like the coach isn't like them yeah. and like they can't form and I'm like oh god you know yeah, I know what you mean so so what so what then made you so you retired how long did you retire for for a year I literally just came out of retirement like four, not even three and a half months ago I went back to my old club because I had yeah. my rights in Utah um I retired because of like missing time with my family and like just pure investment into the game I just feel like I wasn't getting what I needed out of it or whatever. And I was like, why am I kicking this ball for like $23,000 a year? Like yeah. literally, you know? And I'm like, this is just doesn't seem like and it's, whatever. Would you say that obviously there's a massive thing in the press at the moment, obviously with the uh, US women's national team oh, yeah. um, and everything. Do you think, it, like you said at the end of the day, you love playing. Yeah. But it's like all this, that time and effort. And do you think that's the one big struggle for for all players for example like especially female players yeah I mean I, I can definitely venture and guess and put money that like a certain percentage or you know a large percentage of that is like a daily thought you know what I mean? yeah. it's like the financial stability of the sport and like for us to not be able to like most of us not be able to like use this as like your full-time full-time full job and I have to worry about whatever it's like so ridiculous do you know what I'm saying <laughs> I'm yeah. like, how am I a professional, whatever, and I get paid twenty three thousand dollars for twelve months? Yeah, I know like, what you mean. What is that? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like crazy. I'm like, there's no way that like that's like the level. You know, like yeah. I'm not asking for a million dollars, but I'm also like yeah. not asking to be poor. You know what I'm saying? When I'm mean. doing something that one percent of the world can do. Can do yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what, and you what know? made you want to? to come, well, first of all, move completely 360, but what made you want to then get back into soccer again? Was it just because the opportunity came around or, or did you just have- No, I was like that? completely switched off. But like I met this woman my, who's now my agent, yep. um, connected through another friend from US Soccer. And so she, I really want to help kids. Like all I want to do is enhance education for kids and like do stuff like that. And so she basically, um, is really good at like the branding and the marketing and like just a kick-ass person and yeah. you know now agent and so she's like we can really like 
leverage your soccer talent pretty much to like get you a lot of great opportunities, um, make you marketable, marketable, whatever, and then le- and then do what you want to do off the field. You know what I'm saying? It's obviously so much easier to like maneuver around the world when your title is professional soccer player. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so she's like, we can leverage this. So she like, kind of talked me into like just aligning like the two the me's, series, if you other. will, like the soccer and like the non-soccer Sam, you know? And mm-hmm. so I was like, okay, okay, whatever, whatever, kind of thing. And so um, she talked me into it naturally. And then I went my uh, back to my club to start training in Utah. Um, I didn't play in any of the games, but I was just training with them, just getting fit again. And then um, the opportunity to play for City came shortly, like not even three months after I (laughs) came out of retirement or whatever, but I had already played in this league. Like this is my fourth time. So they knew like who I was. And thankfully I was like semi successful here (laughs) once upon a time. So I think it helped. So how was it kind of the difference between how people see soccer in America to how it's viewed in Australia? What's the major difference or is there? Um, I don't like, see a difference I guess from like the out the inside looking out you know I know like some of the girls tell me like soccer is not like a really big sport here because AFL Australian yep. football league is like a huge thing here so I guess like the exposure part is just not as much but like the men's league is like pretty popular ish like the A league or whatever and W league is pretty successful and I think known around the world because of um, the type of players it has and then the yep. Australian national team is also like on the ups so that helps um but the the league is really respected and so like uh, us americans like love 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 coming down here to play i think it's so much fun and what's that like obviously you're you're brand new team now and obviously you're you're a bit older now as well what's that kind of like going into a new team again and and trying to get that mentality again getting a new coach all these things a new Mm -hmm. city a new country yeah How, how is that and how do you think your your coach has, has managed that obviously like do you have a lot of a lot of teammates are they from all the way around the world as well yeah well the the so the usual like i guess group that's usually here mm-hmm. um they're all playing in like europe mostly because yep. some of the national team players are there mm-hmm. and um the names like you probably would know are like playing over there now and so um we have a couple still here but we do have a lot of young players and i'm like everyone's like oh our team's so young and i'm like that's a good thing you know what i'm saying like young players never get the opportunity to like play real time and like be actually tested you know what i'm saying so I just laugh because young players, you know, they, sometimes they complain about not playing. And then I'm like, well, now's your time to shine girl. Like (laughs) you better better start doing something because this is your opportunity. You know what I mean? And like, for me, like I'm so much older than them. Like, I'm like, I can only help you. Like you need to ask me questions. Like I'm going to literally, I can do my best to tell you exactly what's what on the field. But like, I just want to be like a resource for them because they don't, you can't just get experience overnight and you're not going to like, you just have to walk through life and like play the games to get that Mm -hmm. apart. But like, you can like try and like collect knowledge, like from the older players, you know what I'm saying? And then Mm -hmm. try and use it when it's appropriate. But I feel like the young ones, they, they're a little shy and like kind of scared, (laughs) which is fine. But like, as soon as I like turn up to training, I'm like, no, like, this is like work. You know what I mean? Like you need to take your shit very seriously, (laughs) but that's just me massively so obviously you're you're kind of in in australia at the moment what is kind of the what's the next kind of big is there a big project for yourself obviously do you want to continue just to go as high as you can in the women's game yeah i mean i definitely want to i guess you know definitely play here you know if i could play another season here after this that would be great because i just love this league um, and I'm like starting to, I'm learning more and more about city and how this group yeah. works down here. And I just like, love it. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I definitely want to play in England and there's a lot of rules and things like that, but just, mm-hmm. and get myself to Europe would be great. Cause I, I love it over there. Yeah. So, and it would be a new experience because I spend most of my time in America at mm-hmm. the pro level. So I would love to see other leagues and how they, they work and just get that experience. But, mm-hmm. um, no, it's definitely on the radar. I told my agent, I was like, please. Get me to England. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> How do you find? Obviously, you spoke about it a lot in terms of man management mentality, and, and that's one thing definitely that, that is your driving factor and what what you think makes a good coach. If you could 
have one thing, or sorry, if you could have make your coach have one thing, would it would it be that, or would it be something else? If you couldn't mm. live, if you had a coach and you said this coach needs to have this, what do you think as a professional player? What do you think that that thing is for you? Yeah, I think, um, and I don't I don't want to like I wish I had like a word or yeah. like a phrase to like wrap up like the tactical bit but then also like the the like the passion for like the delivery of the tactics or like the delivery of like how they they want us to play do you know what i'm saying because like that's kind of like where you get inspired Mm -hmm. like you can't just like be a robot and be like we're gonna do this you know but like it's like the way you deliver the information you like have to have that little like x factor or like that passion in your voice if you will to like make the team believe like what you're saying is like true like they would never question it you know what I mean and like I don't know the proper word for that but it's like it has to be like something to you because I can tell like when a coach like said something and I'm like nah not believing that you know what I'm saying like didn't really feel that so you would you say it's definitely about the everywhere you've been now I'll I'll try and try and wrap it up in one in one word I'll definitely try and say is the environment I don't know what it is that's all that would you say that all stems down from the environment that the coach makes so having that kind of man yeah. management man management ability you know what that's what it is it's the coach has to like embody what the culture yep. of like, the club is that's exactly what it is they almost okay. have to be like the, the physical example yep. of like what they want the culture to be you know what i'm saying this what, yeah this is what we need to achieve and this is like, what and it's like effortless do. though like they don't yep. have to be they don't they're not yeah. trying they I turn up and you just feel all of a sudden like you feel confident as a player mm-hmm. because like my coach is walking around with like their head high they're saying everything with confidence. They're like telling us exactly what to do. Yeah. They've got problems solved left and right. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, and they've got your back. So it's like a culture thing, you know? No, amazing. Um, one thing I'll do before we, or I do over with everyone, sorry, before we finish is I'm going to shoot you with some quick fire questions and okay. you've got to reply to them as quick as you can. Um, and one word answers, things like that. Okay. Oh, Are you ready? God, this is like a stat test. No, that's all okay. right. Okay. Best. <laughs> Uh, best player you've ever, you've ever played with? Kristen Press. Best player you've ever, you've ever played against? Oof. Uh, Sam Kerr. What makes, um, what's the one thing you need as a player to achieve to become a pro player? Just one Discipline. thing. Say that again. Discipline. 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 Yeah. Who's your footballing idol? Uh, Ronaldinho. Why? I don't know. He's just a magician, <laughs> and I grew up watching him, and it fell in love. <laughs> What's the um, one thing you want to achieve in football? Um, to make the women's game better for the next generation. And my last question: When you've retired properly this time, and you've <laughs> hung off your boots for for good, what's the one thing? that you want people to remember you by in in the game that i was the worst player or i should say the best defender people played against but they always wanted me on their team amazing no yeah. lovely that's good to hear <laughs> and it's like i said it's, i think we've heard especially from today your kind of aspect from a player that's still actively playing has played in a mm-hmm. number of countries as well um but no um that's great but yeah, guys, yeah. Um, I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, I did. Had some really good stories there from Sam. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. Like I said in the last video, there's plenty more coming. Um, and leave a comment on who you want me to um, get on the podcast next. But no, that's it. Amazing. Cheers, Sam. Thanks. <laughs>